nearly 200,000 African Americans would answer the call to fight against the South. Enslaved African Americans will now fight for their own freedom. The Civil War was the deadliest conflict in American history. It was brutal. It was, it was horrific. After four years of savage conflict, the Civil War finally ended in 1865. The Union had been saved, and in a landmark moment, the government passed the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery. After the Civil War, the United States enters into a period of about 10, 12 years called the period of Reconstruction. So Reconstruction is a partially successful experiment in securing um, newfound rights to former slaves. But it comes to an end prematurely because of white Southerners' determination to restore their dominion over the South. The South lost the war, but the ideology of white supremacy was not dislodged. And so they fight to make sure that the South remains under the rule of white supremacy. We're all equal, but the races do need to remain separate. So the doctrine was known as separate, but equal. They needed that racial hierarchy they needed that to be written into the law, and they did. In 1896, a landmark case made racial segregation the law of the land for the whole of the United States. The Supreme Court say if services are offered equally, it doesn't matter if they're racially segregated. And so you actually see a mushrooming of laws across the North and the South that begins to separate and partition the United States. One world for white individuals, another world for black individuals. And it covers everything that you can think of. Interracial marriage is banned. You cannot work together. You cannot eat together. We would have a black school and a white school. And we'd have one carriage in a railway car and nine where white people could sit. What I'm getting at here is that it was never equal. And so racial inequality finds new life. Segregation. Created using Powtoon.